This video will demonstrate how to calculate growing degree days or growing degree day units from daily weather data downloaded from the CoAgMet weather station network. So to start with I have my Excel sheet here and I've got the daily header already across the top uh, ready to receive the data and in one of the previous videos we learned how to do this, how to download daily weather data. So I'm going to go over here now to CoAgMet. I want to get data, in my example I'm going to use Greeley, Colorado. I want data from May 1st, 2015 through October 31st, 2015. For other problems you might want to select different locations or different years. I want to download daily data not hourly or all. Okay, so once I have that ready, I hit submit. There's the data. I click on this sheet, hit Control A to select it, Control C to copy it. Back to Microsoft Excel. Go in this column, row 2 A, and hit Control V to paste it in. And like before, we know that we have to go to the Data tab, Text to Columns. It's delineated, so we want to go to the Next, Tab and Comma, and Finish. And there we have it, and everything looks correct. We have location, date, time. If we go all the way out to the other edge of the spreadsheet, we can see that we have when Gus here in the very last column and everything is matching up. So at this point I'm ready to start my growing degree day calculation but I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now that I'm saved and I have that ready to work with I can start uh, doing the calculation. Recall that growing degree day units this is one place where we normally work in Fahrenheit and the formula is very straightforward. You take the average daily temperature and subtract the base unit. When working in Fahrenheit for corn, which is what we're going to do for our example, that's just going to be the maximum and minimum in Fahrenheit divided by 2 minus 50 degrees. So first thing I'm going to do, here's my maximum temperature and my minimum temperature. I want to use those two. This happens to be in the middle of them. I really don't need that information. I'm going to go over here to my home tab and hit delete and just get rid of that time to maximum. So there's my maximum and minimum temperature. First thing I'm going to do is convert these to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to insert. I'm going to call it Tmax in Fahrenheit. And I'm going to insert another column. Tmin in Fahrenheit. OK, go to that cell, hit Equal. I want my maximum in degrees Celsius times 1.8 plus 32. OK, and I can do the same thing here for the minimum. Could have actually copied those cells, but I just wanted to show you that. And so there's my degrees results in Fahrenheit. I'm going to double click now here on the little lower right hand corner. And now there's all my Fahrenheit data. Recall though that you have to filter the data before you calculate the average temperature. And that's part of the definition of the GDU. We don't want to use maximums that are greater than 86 degrees and we don't want to use minimums that are less than 50 degrees. So what I do is I create two more columns I call it Tmax filtered and Tmin filtered. Okay so how you calculate this is you want to say 
the formula that you use for Tmax is you want to say use the if command. If F2 in this case, which is the max, is greater than 86 degrees, I want to make it 86. Okay? And I want this to happen to be a nested if, if the max is less than 50 degrees, I want to make it 50. Otherwise, just leave it as is. So that's the syntax for the Excel sheet. And you can see it here. Let's double check it. I'm going to click on here, double click. You can see it pasted in. Let's go down here where we know the temperatures are getting large. Here's a day where the maximum temperature was 92 and you can see it actually converted it to 86 which is what we want. If it was less than 86 you can see it left it as is. So this is all working just fine. You can see here's a day where the T max was actually less than 50 degrees and it made it 50. So that formula is working just fine. Now we need to do something similar for the minimum. This one's a little bit easier. You can say equals if, we use our if statement again, if G2, which is our minimum, is less than 50 degrees, let's convert it to 50 degrees, otherwise leave it as is. There you go. And it actually filtered it on this very first one. It was less than 50 and it made it 50. And you can see, you know, it had to convert some of these earlier in this year, uh, but other times it didn't. Okay, so these now are the two temperatures that we want to use for the GDU uh, or GDD calculation. So I'm going to insert another column, call it GDU, and now I'm ready to put in my formula for the actual G GDU, which is equal to H2, which is the max, plus I2 divided by 2 minus 50 degrees. That's the base temperature for corn. Remember, different crops have different base temperatures. So on that very first day, I only picked up a few GDUs. Now double click on that. And you can see them down through here. As you get toward the middle of the season, you can easily pick up over 20. You're during the warm time of the year. Okay, so we're getting close now, but we need to accumulate these over the year to find out when the total GDUs passed the number that we're looking for, the number representing the, t the number of GDUs to reach physiological maturity. So I'm going to insert one more cell. Call this one accumulated GDUs. Remember we could use growing degree days. The first day is just going to be that particular number. And now to accumulate them we want the previous number plus the new number. Okay, so we're adding this one to this one. Highlight that particular cell and double click on it. And there we go. Now we're getting, the, you can see the GDUs accumulating over the year. If we were working a problem, let's say I wanted to know the date where it surpassed uh, 2400 GDUs. Okay. If I'm looking down through here, right there would be the date. I can highlight this cell and then go over here and see that was September 27th. Let's make a graph of this real quick. So if I want to look at that, how that GDU accumulates over the year, I'm going to highlight my date time and then move over. See, I don't know if you saw that. I got it off the screen. So I'm going to highlight the date time. Here's my accumulate. Hold down the control key and hit that. 
So they're both highlighted now. And I want to insert a scatter plot. And there we go. Now we can see here's the date of planting and we see how the GDUs accumulated over the year. I'm going to move this chart to its own screen. And now we're looking okay. Accumulated GDUs over the year and we could now plot this differently and do different things with it to see. You know, one interesting thing, it looks like there might be some missing days in here. Okay, for this particular Greeley data set. I think I had, I requested um, the site, the locations that I gave you for the homework, I think, do not have any missing days because I didn't want that to be complicate the issue. But you can see, I would probably need to double check my data. But here's the type of data that you should get. And um, now you could add labels and fancy it up. If you wanted to do multiple locations, you could plot them all together on the same plot.